Um, <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to be talking about Palm Sunday. We're going to be talking about um, what Palm Sunday is uh, in the life of the church, uh, how we observe Palm Sunday, and, um, you know, how we can begin this period of celebration all over the country, all over the world. Uh, churches are finding new and innovative ways to, um, thank you, Mom, for, for sharing, uh, to find um, to find out how they're going to do Resurrection Sunday. I mean, think about it. We're used to having plays and Easter speeches and all that kind of stuff, and people ain't even been to church in a little while. Thank you, Jamila, for sharing. People ain't even been to church for a little while. So trying to produce something authentic that will still make people feel like they're having a resurrection experience with no Easter egg hunt, no bobbing for apples. Some people, I mean, it's going to be a, y'all don't bob no? Well, I guess for, for Corona, ain't nobody bobbing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can bob on your own. It's going to be an interesting experience uh, to see. Hey, I'm Chandra, and hey, Ave, it's going to be an interesting experience to see how, um, how we regroup, uh, how we can move forward uh, with the traditions of how we worship um, and how we have our celebrations um, moving forward as a church. Uh, so I wanted to take a moment to talk through what Palm Sunday means um, because it's very significant in the life of the church. And uh, hey, Miss Martha, how you doing? It's very significant in the life of Christ, all right? Uh, as we dig in, uh, we're going to be coming from Matthew chapter 21 tonight, all right? So get your you versions and your Bibles and your keyword. Hebrew and Greek study Bible, keyword Hebrew and Greek study Bible. Get your Bibles out and um, let's let's dig into this tonight. Um, who wants to offer a prayer tonight? Anybody? La da da da. Everybody. All together. Okay. Gracious Lord, we just come, God, just lifting up, Lord. We just acknowledge you as our King, as our Father, and so we just thank you, Lord, for this time to be on the nightly word and worship. So, Father, we just lift up this message, God. We just pray that this uh, this discussion would edify you as well as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, hey, Jamila. Uh, hey, tell Brother Theo I got a spot for him. Yep. Tell him. Okay. Uh, so tonight we're in um, Matthew chapter 21. Um, I got the King James Version. What version you got? King James. Yeah, King James. What y'all got? The message. She got the message. All right. So... Um, message. Okay, cool. I know me preach from this, but I was just okay. Uh, Matthew 21. <clears throat> We're going to read uh, verses 1 through 11 um, in Matthew 21. Uh, so if y'all got your King James, whatever kind of Bible you got, I got my e sword loaded up here as well. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get into this. Um, Matthew uh, 21. Oh, Brother Theo watching on his phone. That's what's up, bro. Uh, Matthew 21. Here we go. Verse 1 says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, they sent Jesus, then sent Jesus two disciples, two, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All right, verse 4. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the, fi the foul, foul of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought out the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they sent him thereon, set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from the trees, and strewed them in the way. And the multitudes uh, then went before, and that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, um, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. All right? Um, that was uh, Matthew 21, 1 through 11. Jasmine or Brandon, y'all want to read? Off in the message Bible. All right. Matthew 21, verse 11. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethpage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. 
go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, full of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name, Hosanna in highest heaven. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one Nazareth in Galilee. All right, so we've heard a couple of things. One, Jesus sends how many disciples? Two. Two. Sends two disciples to go get a donkey. <laughs> two disciples to go get a donkey, okay? Uh, when he sends them, some interesting things happen. Uh, he's gonna, he tells them in advance, hey, when you get to the owner, tell them I need them, and they ain't going to give you no problem. So you imagine... If I send two of y'all to go get me a donkey and come back, what kind of problems do you, what what kind of things are gonna be on your mind? Oh, I'm gonna get the donkey. How I'm, you gonna I'm afford it? How you gonna afford a donkey? He ain't mm -hmm. getting no money. Mm -hmm. Uh what else? What y'all think? What's some considerations about this donkey situation? The donkey is a wild animal, so the donkey could be I mean tethered but Controllable. Right. It said it says a pack animal, so it's wild and crazy. A wild donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. This is not this is not a family animal. It's a crazy donkey. A crazy donkey. He ain't asked for no horse. Mm. Cause a horse, it would have made it sense. Like a horse is something that you know we used to somebody taking a uh what's the thing called that you sit on a horse. A sa boy, be smart. A saddle and sit the saddle on the horse. We talking about a donkey. And then what it say? Uh, how you sit on it? What do you use? Wasn't it a blanket? No, I don't know blanket. That was a mat. Verse seven. Wasn't oh. it a mat? No, it ain't say no mat in the King oh, James God version. Says a mat. In the King James oh, version, he says and on. brought the ass and the coat and put on them their clothes. Yeah, mm. their clothes. Where they get these clothes from? <laughs> huh? They ordered them off Amazon. No, one no order. Em <laughs> no, it was straight up. Put your clothes on the donkey. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So there's an ass and a coat. What's the difference between the two? The the coat. Uh, what is a coat? The baby. Uh, on a coat. Huh? Coat is. <laughs> A coal is a baby horse, right? Yeah, it's the baby. Okay, so we got the donkey and the baby. Yeah. Why we got to have both of them? He can't ride but one of them. He got his feet rested on, on one. He resting his feet on the baby. <laughs> no, sir. All right. <laughs> it don't say nothing about... Boy, you interpolating. Man. You isogeting. Okay. Um. So, okay, cool. I just asked the question because... I don't see nothing else about anything about this cult anywhere. Okay. Right. So, um, so here we go. And a great multitude, what, what they do in verse eight? Mm -hmm. they, they, they spread their clothes in the way. Down on the ground. So, right. Here come Jesus riding in on a donkey <laughs> that they don't put their clothes on this donkey and Jesus is riding on this donkey. Mm -hmm. And as they come into the city, the people putting their garments on the ground so the donkey can walk on their garments. Yeah. Now, um, mm -hmm. what kind, what, what will make people, what, what will make people do that? What, what will make you 
throw your good clothes on the ground so the donkey can walk on your clothes. They must have thought it was like Jesus or the donkey was some type of royalty. Somebody important, somebody worth like giving my all to or giving. So let's 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 make this story relevant to today. If Jesus were coming down 42nd Street, because this is the miracle on 42nd Street. If Jesus was coming down 42nd Street, how would he be arriving in 2020? In a Tesla. In a Tesla. He's coming in a limo. Tesla, limo. No. Rolls Royce. Porsche. Like a, like a, a, a new age Tesla. Like one, I ain't gonna like lie, Jesus was kind of modest though. So he might Listen, be coming in like I'm a saying. little, okay. a little bump, but He's yeah. coming in a bomber. He's he might coming, be coming in, in Cadillac. Listen, he's coming in a 1996 you know, Ford, he's coming in because yeah. he's so meek Jesus. and mild. Yeah, he's not coming in with all the glit and the glamour and drawing attention to himself. The reason why the people uh, responded to him is because they heard who he was. So they came with this expectation and this understanding yeah. that this person that we've heard all these rumors about is now entering into the city. Yeah. And so now we're at this, now they're at this place where they're like, listen, Casting down whatever we have before him because he's royalty, because he is from God. And so that that was their response. Just like if we saw him, we would bow before him because that is our response to him. That sounds good. But why Jesus didn't walk? He was tired. The disciples walked. Everybody went riding on the donkey. That ain't what the scriptures say. <laughs> He's isogening again. Why? 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 Why is it necessary? The prophecy had to be fulfilled. I what believe... prophecy? The prophecy that says here in what is that verse four that this had to take Lord place. Lord Jamila, right? Jamila says he would have come in and Uber because the donkey was borrowed. <laughs> That's ah, real. Ah. I love Hello. that. Okay. That was okay. Good. Uber Jesus. All right. That's real. Um, That's why? Good. Why? Did he come in on a donkey? Like, what is the significance? Because, watch this. As soon as it says that he's coming in, mm-hmm. the people start to throw their throw their um, garments in the street so that the don't to, to pave the way, and then they cut down palms. Mm-hmm. What and what they do from the they and they stroll them in the way. So they are literally mm-hmm. not taking these palms to fan Jesus like coming to America. Uh uh-uh. uh The palms are like sort of providing a red carpet the the palms hey uh bishop hunter and gene prince how y'all doing um the palm bishop hunter, look uh-huh. the palms are paving the way for jesus riding on his donkey so why is jesus on a donkey wait 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 okay. wait Wait. So going back to his Come birth. Come back in the frame. Can't nobody see you. <laughs> going back to his birth. Okay. He was they were riding on a donkey, right? No. Yeah, they were. Mary. Mary was riding on a donkey. Mm-hmm. Correct. Jesus was riding inside of her. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they. Okay. What? That's where I that's where I was connecting it. It's okay, going keep connecting. back to that humble beginning, that humble entrance into the world. That's how I was connecting the royal welcome. Okay. Anybody else got any any answers? Mm-hmm. What do you think, Pastor? Jesus. Okay. I'm going to tell you. But we got to go further in the story, and then it's going to start making sense. Hey, Miss Deborah, how you doing? We got to go further in the story. It's going to make sense. Okay. What happens? <laughs> what What's the next thing that we see happening? What's the next pivotal pivotal point in this story? What happens this time next week? This Saturday, next week, what will we be talking about? If Jesus we were, rising if, from the dead. No, not yet. Okay, Jesus dying. Not yet. Yeah, we've been talking about the crucifixion because yesterday would have been Good Friday and all of us would be in mourning. Watch this. Not only would we be in mourning, but we would be hiding. Because remember, we just saw Peter, one of the apostles. He is afraid. He done denied even knowing Jesus. And we heard Peter 
denying Jesus. So if Peter denied Jesus, guess what we finna do? We ain't finna act like we know him neither. Because Jesus has told us to meet him at the upper room. So what we finna do? We finna pack. <laughs> we packing up house. Cut all the lights off. We don't want nobody to know we're home. We finna go to, um, to the upper room. And we gonna sit there until Jesus show up like he told us he would. Because we don't know who to trust. You know? Um, so that's, that's what's going on next Sunday. So, no, that's what's going on next Saturday. So this Saturday, tomorrow, this, next, this Sunday, we are watching Jesus ride into the city on the back of this donkey saying, Hosanna. Mm-hmm. This is Jesus' last triumphant moment before his preparation to go to the cross. We, you're not going to, okay, this verse 21. You ain't going to see... You ain't gonna see too many more Jesus occurrences <laughs> before it's time for him to go. Okay? In verse 26, the, the, the leaders of the Sanhedrin start to uh get him together. So from 21 to 26, it all goes downhill. Okay? So here we go. Verse 21, and if you got a King James Version, you'll realize that from 21 to 26, 22, 23, 24 is all epistemic verba. It's all red letters. It is all the words of Jesus. So in this time between verses 21 and 26, you're talking about discipleship. This is like in your face. Hey, sit down with me because this, I got to, just like, you know, if you got a loved one that's finna leave, you know what I'm saying, they, they in hospice, they finna sit you down and tell you where the insurance stuff is. They're going to start telling you stuff like who who that person's mama really is. And, you know, I know you thought June Bugs was your brother. He not your brother. Y'all know how it go. Um, so Jesus is telling them the, you know, this is the stuff that you got to know because some interesting stuff in the happen. Okay. So that's that's where we are. So there's a lot of tension that's getting ready to happen after Palm Sunday. I don't want to get into... Y'all's Holy Week Revival church messages and y'all sermons and stuff. I don't want to mess that up for the people. But I need you to understand that the reason why Jesus would have been um, riding in on a donkey, because of this. Why would they have been calling him the king of the Jews if they had never seen him? Right. So when you get before Pilate, the Romans are mocking Jesus because they've heard, oh, he think he the bomb. He just rode through the hood on a donkey. And the folks outside in the hood, they throwing palms in his way. They throwing their clothes on the ground. And Pilate like, they ain't never, they ain't never received me like that. The people's in the temple like, you know, who we think he is? All over the place, all we hear is Jesus coming to town. Jesus coming to town. He done rode in on a donkey. It was bad enough. He taught me to feed these people on the side of a mountain with these right. fish and these loaves. Now he riding into town on a donkey? Oh, we got to take care of this. This is just too much. Think about... <laughs> Think about leaders. Think about interesting leaders in the past that have um, that have had ha- that have made their lives into a certain level of fanfare because of how be- how um, publicly popular they have become. Mm. And then all of a sudden, right after they get to the peak of public opinion, right after they get to the peak of who they are when it gets to the point where as you know they really make, get ready to make a bigger impact than you ever seen like the next great the next thing they get ready to do is just gonna be tremendous then boom they're gone life ends there's some kind of conspiracy that happens that completely wipes them away some somebody assassinates them i mean that that has become the pattern of public leadership and it all i think it, there are many parallels to where we find Jesus on this Palm Sunday experience. So Palm Sunday tomorrow's worship experience shouldn't just be a uh, let's go to church type moment for you. I'm glad you're going to go and experience it. I, I, I don't know who you're going to watch. I hope you're going to watch New St. Paul because we're going we gonna to do it. All right. But the experience of Palm Sunday, you think that between one Sunday and Friday, Next Friday, he gone. How do we go from Sunday, we're willing to throw our clothes 
on a donkey, throw our clothes in the street so to, to make a path for the donkey, we're going to cut down palms because we want to welcome him in. We're going to be singing Hosanna and then by Friday, crucify him. We're going to choose the, the murderer over Jesus. Man, listen, tomorrow, tomorrow got to be a celebration. It's got to be a, a bittersweet moment because we know what the story is, all right? But think about it. Think about the disciples. Think about the people who were around Jesus at this particular time. They had no clue that next Friday it was all going to be over. They, they had no idea that between this Sunday we riding in with Jesus. We Look, we finna walk in with Jesus. He riding a donkey. Man, we, we picked a good donkey. You see that donkey? Girl, give me some. We, we ain't had no money. We just went. Look. I, I bet y'all will never figure out how we got a donkey, huh? Oh. Oh. Yeah. We just put Jesus on the biggest pedestal that he has been on at this point. Because, like you were saying, at this point, he's been of no, he's not made a fanfare himself. He's been humble, okay? Now Jesus, right, he is, as Brent, as Brent said, he's fulfilling a prophecy. Why? Because the people have got to see him on a level of authority. The people have got to see him on a priestly level. This is not a Pharisee. This is not a Sadducee. This is not a priest from the temple. This is a common, everyday, walking person. No ordination, no consecration. He's Mary and Joseph boy. He the carpenter kid. Right. And now all of a sudden, they are lifting him up on a donkey, bringing him into the city. Make, I mean, the, the thing about the palms is, that for the first time, people are making an effort to make a big deal about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Before, they were on the side of the mountain trying to figure out how he was going to feed them all. Y'all grown. Why you got to feed you? <laughs> but now, all of a sudden, here it is. When they put king of the Jews over his head on that cross, we remember that this past Sunday, all of us were out in the streets watching him ride in on a donkey, and we were all excited. Think about a parade. It wasn't the fact, I mean, they had no TV, so they weren't watching the parade from home. They were leaving wherever they were. People, imagine somebody going around knocking on all the doors. Jesus is, Jesus is riding in the city. Come on, come on. Jesus is riding in the city. So you can imagine... They're outside on 42nd Street. People from all of the houses in the neighborhood are watching Jesus ride this donkey down the street. And because of who he has become to them, right? Now, he's become popular. With no Instagram, with no Facebook, no YouTube, no Twitter, no none of that, Jesus has become completely popular without social media. They've heard about him healing blind eyes. They've heard about him causing lame people to walk. They've heard about Jesus. They've heard about Jesus. They've heard about Jesus. I want to go see him. And when I get there, watch this. I'm talking about worship this week. I'm not just going to watch. I'm going to do my part too. You got a palm? What you got a palm for? Oh, you going to put a palm in the street? I want to get a palm too. They're going to make an effort to make a big deal about Jesus. Imagine what it would be like if you made an effort to make a big deal about Jesus. Yeah. Look, um, you got Facebook, you got Instagram. How many times have you challenged people to come see Jesus? Yeah. Are you knocking on doors in your neighborhood to let people know that, hey, Jesus is coming to town. Come, come to my worship experience. Jesus is going to be there. Because guess what? We can read the story. Between now and Friday, all of the opinions will change. What can you do to make Jesus famous? What, what can you do to let all your friends and all of your network know that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you? What can you do to let people know 
that, hey, tomorrow, Jesus is going to ride into town. I heard he's coming to town. You got to be there. Well, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Um, Imagine. Now, we talk about tension in the text. What do you think Judas was thinking when Jesus rode on his donkey? Mm -hmm. I wonder how much they paid for that. Why he get to ride on the donkey? He need to share that donkey. We all been walking together. Imagine what the people around him were thinking about the fact that now, finally, he is being exalted. We left all our, we left our family. We left all of our jobs. We're taking all this time off to volunteer, all this stuff, and he get to ride a donkey? Why he ain't get a donkey for everybody? <laughs> we all could have rolled in on donkeys. Think about it. Peter, James, and John, the sons of Son Thunder. Hey, Miss Sybil, think about Peter, James, and John. Remember, they were on the side of the mountain and said, Jesus, let's, ha- let's have these mountains, one mountain for each of us. Imaginary mind. Jesus could have got donkeys for everybody. Why he just got, why he just got a donkey and a coat? Who going to ride on a coat? <laughs> We can't, I can't ride on no coat. You gonna get you a donkey? I'm gonna find me a donkey too. I wanna ride like Jesus. You wanna ride like Jesus? Are you willing to go through the sacrifice that he made for you? Think about that. It's, it's, it's unveiling right in front of us. And, and, and even though, hey, Melinda, even though um, we are not, we are no longer living um, in that time and season, we realize and recognize that Jesus is still Jesus. So question, what is it that we can do now to make Jesus famous? What can we do? How is it that we can play a part in letting the world know about uh, Jesus to the point where um, they would go out of the way to uh, to make fanfare about him, because I think I think the body of Christ has a tremendous opportunity, because when we come out of this crisis, mm-hmm. things are never going to be the same, mm-hmm. but we still have a tremendous opportunity to make him famous. Mm-hmm. What do we do? How, how do we make Jesus famous? Divert the attention back to him. Uh, I think that's one of, one, of the, one of the areas that we've gone astray is that we are focused on so many other things mm-hmm. and building our own platforms and building our own, uh, you know, our own following, mm-hmm. but reconciling the people back to him, showing the people how to get access to him and showing who he is in his fullness. What? Reconciling the people back to him? Man, churches are trying to make sure that the people come to church. Did you hear what I said? All right. So there is a tremendous difference between evangelism and marketing. I mean, because churches all over the country this week are going to be putting out their flyers about their Good Friday Seven Last Sayings. And I want you to. God knows I need you to put out a flyer. <laughs> Help me. Okay. But, <laughs> but the real deal is we are marketing, but we're not evangelizing. It's a hard conversation because of it's, it's trending. It is trending for us to have a brand. It is trending for us to make certain that our logos are right. And hey, because of what I do, it's an expectation. However, are we evangelizing? You know, you know, Pastor, it's interesting because today with our ministry, we went out and fed the homeless and having conversations with the, with the homeless today, uh, my heart was wrenched because... Um, they, as I'm talking to them, they're like, yeah, there's nobody out here right now that really is concerned about us, and we're humans too. And I was like, this is such an opportunity 
for the body of Christ to step up to the plate and show who Christ is in the earth, show the love of God in the earth. And I know that there's, you know, concerns with the COVID-19 and of course, take the proper uh, precautions. But there are people that are living out here in the streets that don't have any protection or home or anything like that. And uh, just uh, we went to two different places and we were just feeding them, having conversations with them. And it wasn't the fact of, oh, come to at the well, come to come to my ministry. But it was the fact that, listen, God loves you so much and he's so concerned about you that he stirred in our spirits that we needed to come out here in the heat and we needed to spend time with you and have conversations with you and, and show that the love of God and show that you are on the mind of God. And, and I mean, from uh, the youngest, they are in their 20s to the oldest that are 60s and 70s and they're on the streets and having these conversations today. I was like, God, we've missed the mark, but it's such an opportunity for us to step up to the plate. And, you know, Apostle Ernest Justine, he was doing it today in Clearwater. We were doing it today in St. Pete. But if we would all just lock in mm -hmm. to the fact of it's not about building our kingdom, but it's about building the kingdom, mm -hmm. we would see lives transformed and changed and people's lives affected for the glory of God. So how do we shift the focus? How, how coming back out of the crisis, because I, I truly believe that Jesus is going to deliver us from this. I believe that this is not, this is not the end of where we're going. Mm -hmm. After this is all said and done, what, what do we need to do as the church from you all's perspective to, to put Jesus back on this donkey, riding down, mm -hmm. riding down the, the, riding through our communities? What do we need to be doing to lay the palms out and to be singing Hosanna? What do we, because watch this, watch this. Jesus didn't ride his donkey to the church. No. He did not ride his donkey to the synagogue. He didn't ride his donkey to a place of worship. He rode his donkey into the mix of the people. He, he made himself visible to the people. Now, during this time and season, the church is making itself visible to the people by way of Facebook and YouTube. But there's a community outside who still heard nothing from us. And in a time and season where people are looking for hope, we're, we're still asking them to come to my church. Now we're asking them to come to my virtual church. We're still not taking the message of Christ to the people. We're still saying, come in here. And the commission and commandment tells us to go. What, you know, we're, we're in the time and season where he's got us, he's got our attention. He's got us undistracted, but we're still doing the same thing in another direction. We're still not feeding the hungry. And I ain't talking about individual ministries. Right. I'm talking about the church. Yeah. We're still not clothing the naked. We're, we're, we're preaching to people in this form, but there are tangible, touchable people outside that we're still not reaching. Like, this is the revival of hope. I wish I could do the revival of hope outside in the parking lot. Because the individuals who need to hear the message of Christ probably won't log on to this. Unless you share and do watch parties. That's the whole reason I'm doing it. So you can share and do watch parties. That's an evangelistic pool of this. Now watch this. I ask you all, um, no shade at all. I ask you to share and do watch parties so that the people from your technological networks, from your social media networks, can see what it is that's going on. So I have 5,000 Facebook friends, all right? If I do a watch party, then it's a good possibility that someone of my 5,000 Facebook friends who is not saved can see what is going on, and just by paying attention to it, they can hear the message of Christ. But we're not sharing this. We're sharing the funny TikToks. We're sharing the, the news reports about COVID-19. We're sharing um, all the different stories, but somebody is sharing hope and we ain't sharing that. How many times have you taken a moment and put, put a status on Facebook that will provide hope? 
I know we got these funny games going on, like who the people in your in your high school and what their names gonna be, and look up the different people that come up on your timeline if you tap this number in and all. That. I know we got all that funny stuff going on, but have you shared the plan of salvation? Have you asked the people who are your friends? Do your friends know Jesus? Do your friends know that you care about their soul? Because if not, you have an awesome opportunity to use your social media network to do what you ain't been doing all along, evangelism. But we as a church are using social media and the internet and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as a way to become popular. But we ain't making Jesus famous. We want our brand to be big. We want our pastors to be big. We want to find more members. We want more people to come, 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 come. But the church ain't going. And because of that, we still got spots and wrinkles. And Jesus ain't coming back for that. I'm would you have been one of the people outside putting palms in the street or would you have been at home watching him on your live stream? And that's why I believe people should go back to, to testifying and telling their testimonies. That's another way to uplift Jesus because most people, a lot of people who are not saved, you know, they think Christianity is about living this perfect lifestyle and never messing up, never having down moments, never being depressed, never feeling alone, never going through nothing, and it's not about that. And I feel like if people tell their testimony and tell them, you know, tell tell other people how far Jesus had brought you, tell other people, you know, what Jesus brought you out of or what situations you've been in and you overcame, that will inspire people and that will give people a bigger of a, a idea of what being a Christian is and of who Jesus is and of who God is. But are you willing to admit that story? Yeah. Are you willing to admit the fact that everything in your life ain't right? Because what I also know is social media has produced some of the most schizophrenic personality complexes I've ever seen in my life. It has caused us to feel like everything has to be perfect. You know how I know? Because you take 10 pictures on your selfie before you share one because your angle got to be perfect. Your filter, your filter's got to be right because you don't want people to see the real you. You're afraid if somebody realizes that you have blemishes. So when it is that people who aren't perfect feel like they can't relate to us, is Jesus going to make me perfect too? Is Jesus going to cause my bills to go away? Because I came to church and I'm still struggling with my bills. Jesus not working for me. I came to church and my marriage is still failing. Why Jesus ain't working for me? Because we painted this picture that because you choose Jesus, all your worries go away. You don't have to worry because you have a solution for your problem. But guess what? <laughs> you better think your way through this, baby. But we don't share that part of the gospel. It's a little bit too um, vulnerable for us. That's why the testimony services, I got tired of listening to them when I was a kid because I already knew what people was going to say. Uh-huh. It was not authentic anymore. It was, you know, watered down, uh, you know what I'm saying, sugar pebbles, you know what I'm saying, Captain Crunch uh, cereal. Um, it, was like, <laughs> it was like watered down testimonies. I thank God for who he is to me. And child, I've been going through, but God is going to be good. Then we start testimony, testimony service. And because of prosperity, if you want to buy my new car, if you want to buy my new house, and, and, and you got a new car? Mm. What you do so good to get a new car? I ain't got a new, new car. Who you think he is got a new car? And he ain't here bragging about his new car. He bragging about his new house. I bet he, did you, you know he went bankrupt, right? You know he filed chapter 13 in order to get that new house. But he ain't going to tell y'all that. That's what the church do. That's the real true story. What do we got to do to get to back to the point of sharing our true testimony? What do we got to do, y'all? Don't be scared. I think in order to have a true testimony, you got to really go through some stuff. Sad to say, but it's the honest truth. If you haven't really, really dealt dealt with something, you know your, your, your testimony won't be as authentic because you won't really feel, you know, the pain or you won't really feel whatever emotions might come with that testimony. I'm not saying, oh, I have to be suicidal to have a testimony, but 
you you might have had to have a loss or maybe you had to have somebody close to you who passed or maybe you know you have to you have to go through stuff to be able to tell a story so how can we make Jesus you know I had a conversation with a brother and I was like I just want to be effective in ministry. Their perspective was they wanted pe- they wanted ministry to be relevant. And in the see and I understood why. Because if you think about where we are as a society, we do all we can to be relevant. I remember being a preacher's kid, um, my parents didn't allow me to listen to secular music. They just did. Thank you, Mama. They didn't allow me to listen to a lot of secular music. Now, I overdosed on it when I got an opportunity to. <laughs> but uh, growing up, they would not allow me to listen to a lot of secular music. Uh, but when I went to school, it made me feel some kind of way that I couldn't sing the songs like all the other kids were singing. It made me feel some kind of way that I didn't know the lyrics to the song. You know what it's like when, um, what song uh, Beyonce redid with, uh, Before I Let Go? What if Before I Let Go came on and everybody else is grooving and, 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 and jicking and stuff and you couldn't sing the song? It makes you feel some kind of way. And because of that, we've done all we can to be socially relevant. Not that the music that we're learning is edifying our hearts and spirits, but it is causing us to feel relevant. We don't want to be the weird people that don't know what everybody else knows. We don't want to be the weird people who can't relate and can't talk to everybody else. We, can't, we don't want to be the weird people that can't have conversation. You know, we want to be like everybody else because honestly and truly, we have an internal problem with being peculiar. That we don't, we got a problem with not relating to the world. The Bible tells us to be in the world, but not of the world, but we want to be of the world we want to be of the world and in church. And it don't always relate and agree. So what do we do, y'all? Because there's, there's another generation out there who is wondering. I, I believe that they really still need an answer. I, I believe that they really believe because I believe that they still want to intimately know who Jesus is. Right. What do we do? To make Jesus famous again. What do we do to cause people to want to run out in the street and see Jesus ride down the street on a donkey? What do we have to do to create that passion? Because guess what it was? Okay, I imagine, I'm going to isogeet for a moment. I'm going to have my uh, poetic license of creativity. I imagine that Jesus had the two disciples to go get the donkey because the rest of the 10 were telling the people that he was coming to town. Who you telling? Are you letting anybody know that the answer is here? I know y'all been telling everybody that COVID-19 here. Have y'all been telling anybody that the answer is still here? Y'all out getting face masks. Where your palms at? <laughs> Sure, bring your face mask to church. I don't mind you bringing your face mask to church. Bring your palms too. What did you bring to celebrate Jesus? What have you done during this season to make Jesus the focus and center of your timeline? What? Because, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. The world is still asking, where is the church in all this? What, what's the church going to say? So when they log on to your live streams tomorrow, <laughs> Jesus better be the answer and not your church. What are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, let me tell you the harsh reality of this all. You know why I came on live stream tonight? Because this is a story that doesn't get told. This is the reality. 
we're going to have you come to church tomorrow to have just another service. Mm -hmm. Has anybody explained to you what Palm Sunday really is? Have they ever taken a moment? You've been going to church your whole entire life. Have they ever taken a moment to make Palm Sunday real for you? Because now I hope that we broke the story down. I hope that when you watch Palm Sunday worship experience from wherever you are, that man, I, I hope that you have a real reality of what you're getting ready to celebrate tomorrow. I hope you realize that it's not another church as usual. I hope you recognize that it's not just another moment to wake up and watch church while you're in the bed. I hope you realize that tomorrow is about us making Jesus famous. I hope you realize that tomorrow is about Jesus being personable as he is, bringing himself down your street. And as you think about him riding a donkey down your street tomorrow, will you run outside your house to see him? What did he look like on that donkey? Because if you think about it, I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see the day when I can look into the master's face. I can't wait to the day when I get to take my crown off my head. And just like they were throwing palms, I want to cast my crown around the throne of God. I can't wait until the day when I can take that robe and throw that robe out in the street and say, Jesus, come on. I, I know you gave me this nice robe, but this robe ain't nothing. I want your presence in my life. What will you cast down before Jesus? What are you willing to sacrifice? How will you celebrate him? Will you give him your all in worship tomorrow? Man, uh, um, imagine what it would have been like for the disciples knowing that they were getting ready to take that trip. Imagine what it would have been like for the disciples knowing that they were getting ready to, for once again to walk out into another multitude, another crowd of people. Guess, guess what? You know what? I could imagine that if Jesus was walking down the street tomorrow, how many of y'all would show up? Would y'all have masks on? Would y'all be worried about COVID-19 if Jesus was walking down your street tomorrow? Would you be worried about social distancing if Jesus was walking down the street? Because guess what? <laughs> he's right here. Mm -hmm. he's, he's walking in the midst of us. Man. This has been fun for me. You get anything out of this tonight? Yeah. What you get out of it? That they was making fun of Jesus. Why do you think they're making fun of him? I think deep down they really knew. I think they deep, deep down they, they knew that mm -hmm. that Jesus was who he said he was, but I believe man, man, man didn't want to be outdone by one person, and so they conspired against him to try to get rid of him. Yeah, I think what what group of people want to be outdone by one old one little person? Why we can't get one of this? Why we can't get rid of this one little dude? He caused so much. <laughs> he doing all these miracles and junk, and we around here and not being able to accomplish half as much as what he done did. So I think it was jealousy, and they they knew they knew who he was. What you think, man? It's time to put him back on top. Definitely is. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make Jesus famous. Yeah, time to put him back on top. Um. Hey, wherever you are, no matter what you're doing. Man, tomorrow is going to be, we're going to commemorate this special occasion that we've been talking about. Um, and it's, it, we're going to do it the best that we can, all right? Uh, I want to invite you to, hey, come worship with us at New St. Paul tomorrow. Um, not physically. Uh, <laughs> join us for our live stream. Uh, our worship team will be here tomorrow. We'll be uh, serving communion as it's the first Sunday. Um, but I hope that no matter what worship experience you enjoy tomorrow, that you have in your minds 
that tomorrow starts the clock. Tomorrow the clock starts ticking to Good Friday. Tomorrow the clock starts ticking as to when it was on Sunday they celebrated him. And by Friday, they were in the mob saying, crucify him. Man, this Holy Week experience, guess what? It's a Holy experience, Holy, Holy Week experience like never before. This Palm Sunday is a Palm Sunday like never before. Because there are freedoms and liberties that we have taken for granted. I bet you won't never have another Palm Sunday like this. What well, what will you do differently? You used to going to your church and getting a nice little palms and cutting them into a cross and putting them on. What will you do? Will you still find a way to celebrate Jesus tomorrow? Will you still find a way to make his presence important in your life? Listen, this has been fun to me. I, I've had a great time. Thank you guys for joining me tonight for Word and Worship. Um, man, what you don't hear is behind us, this music is sort of taking me to a different place. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was. I wasn't sure if I was just hearing music. Yeah. Or if there was actually music playing. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's pray, Father. There may be somebody watching tonight, or today, or tomorrow, whenever it is. Uh, there may be someone watching who wants to celebrate Jesus but doesn't know who He is. The plan of salvation is simple and plain. Accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. Then, once you know that you've been saved, open your mouth and confess that Jesus is the Lord of your life. It's just that simple. What an awesome ability and occasion for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. So wherever you are, if you need a Savior like Christ, won't you pray this prayer with me? Father, I know I've done some wrong things. I'm sorry. I'll do my best not to do them again. I really need a Savior I accept Jesus. Come into my life. Wash me clean. Make my life new. Thank you for raising Jesus from the dead for my sins. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you said that prayer, I want you to say something for me. If that was your first time saying it, or your first time really believing it, or you've been doing some other stuff and you needed to come back to Jesus, I want you to say this for me. Say, I am saved. Come on, say it again. Say, I am saved. Listen, if you just said that, I'm excited for you. And I might not wait till Sunday. I might jump off the table right now. Because uh, when someone finds Jesus, it is so uh, it is so worth what, what all that we do. Um, we're excited for you, and we want to reach out to you and let you know what are some next steps you can take to solidify your relationship with Christ. So do this for me. Uh, if you just accepted Christ, won't down in the comments, you make a comment and say, I am saved, and someone from my ministry staff will be in contact with you directly to walk you through next steps about establishing your relationship with Christ. You may not live in Tampa. That is okay. No matter where we are, where you are, the real, the, the, the real important part is that you accept Jesus. Now, if you're looking for a church home, we love to connect you with, some, with a church home somewhere. 
or if you can't find the church home in your general location and you want to connect to what we're doing here in the ministry of New St. Paul, we would love to be your e-church family. We will do all that we can to keep you connected to the ministry here at New St. Paul. Um, so tonight, thank you, uh, Prophet Brandon uh, from At The Well Ministries. Thank you, uh, Patricia from... Um, thank you, Patricia. I ain't going to say... Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and Minister Jasmine uh, ran out for a second. Look, we appreciate you all um, for all that you do and for watching us and supporting us. If you'd like to join us for tomorrow for worship, hey, join us at either newsaintspaul.org, new uh, saint spelled out, paul.org. You can watch us live um, from my website. Join us here on Facebook Live. We'll be having a watch party here, and uh, I'll be doing my watch party here. Um, you can also join us possibly, hopefully, on Instagram tomorrow morning. And, um, yeah, we, we look forward to having a wonderful worship uh, experience for you. The Palm Sunday celebration is going to be off the chain here at New St. Paul. We're going to do some stuff that we ain't never done before, and we're going to make Jesus famous. Thank y'all so much for watching us. Uh, God bless you all, and have a wonderful night.